part two of the Spooky Seekers quest with the Seeker Basement Library in the Haunted Mansion unlocks one week after you complete part one. Now, although part two is supposed to also be played in multiplayer, there is an easy workaround so you can complete this part on your own. You should see this quest pop up in your quest log one complete week after finishing part one. So if you finish part one on a Friday, you should see availability for part two on the following Friday. Once it is available, go to the Haunted Mansion again and go back to the Secret Basement Library. Here you should see Top Hat, Big Challenges, and Karomi again in the same place where they were last week. Talk to Karomi to activate the quest. Now if you go in this door that's to the right of the number one door, Door, and up onto the balcony you should see a new switch. Once you slide that switch, this bookcase over here will slide down and become a ramp up to this little balcony with door number two. Once you enter door number two, you're going to see a two-sided puzzle that looks a little like those that we'd seen in the previous Haunted Mansion. And there's a series of buttons and levers that make the floors go up and down so that you can either walk on them or not. Now we'll look at the easiest way to do this. If you do this in multiplayer, similar to part one, one player will be on the left and the other on the right, and you will be pushing the buttons, flipping the switches to help one another get to the other side of the room where the chest is. However, if you want to try this on your own, you can do that too. Now I would strongly recommend doing the left side. So get as far as you can in the maze, take your thermal potion, and all you really need to do is glide over the open areas and land on the solid areas. You can flip the switches if you want to. You can go over to this left side and grab this book that's here if you want it. I'm pretty sure this is a top hat three heart gift book. So it's a nice bonus. But if all you want to do is the chest, starting at the end, all you need to do is take your thermal potion, jump and glide with your balloons until you get to this button. Once you're on the button, jump again and glide all the way to the finish line. It's possible that it takes you more than one try to get over here, but this one is very doable. Once you're at the end, you can open the chest and you will be rewarded with the Ice Witch Dress. Similar to the forest witch dress and hat, this item is exclusive to this puzzle, so you will not be able to dye it, and you cannot dye the other items into this colorway. Now if you want a second one of these dresses, you can either complete the right side on your own, or you can play multiplayer on someone else's island and help them out. So let's look at the right side in single player, and then we'll go over how to do this in multiplayer. Now if you're gonna do the right side, you probably want to have a stock of thermal potions because even though this one is just as straightforward for some reason it is so much harder to do or at least it was for me. You can flip the switches if you want so that you can walk a little bit but they don't make a big difference. The thing that helped me the most was taking a speedy walking potion and a thermal potion at the same time. And this helped me in two ways. The first was because I feel like this gave my jumps that extra boost I needed to make it to the end because navigating those corners on that last jump took me so many tries. And I think part of it is the perspective over here is really complicated because it's not perfectly up and down. And then it seemed like if you hover too long or if you touch a side or something, your thermal potion stopped working and so you just fall. But it can be done. Definitely the speedy walk plus the thermal potion made it so much easier. And even though it's so much easier, I still wouldn't call it easy. It takes a lot of control and a lot of luck, and I can't imagine doing it without a controller. So if you keep falling, me too. But basically, you go to that first switch, you jump and hover over to the next little corner piece, jump and hover over to the button, make sure you have your speedy walking potion and your thermal potion activated, start in that corner, run and jump as far as you can, and then you have to quickly navigate around these two corners and over to the switch. Do not pull the switch. I tried that. All it does is make the next part of the floor that you need disappear. Doesn't help you at all, at least on the right side. I would really only do this if you're up for a challenge. You may have to do it multiple times. You can watch the stream where we tried this. It took me many, many tries and I didn't feel like I really did anything differently between the tries that I got really close, the ones that I fell much sooner, and the one where I finally did make it. But the good news is you can always 
just do the left side, get your one ice witch dress. What are you really going to do with the second one other than displayed on a mannequin anyway? I will also say that I did try using villager abilities and they do not work inside the haunted mansion. I said that there were two things I liked about using the speedy potion, the speedy walking potion, and the thermal potion at the same time. And the other one is, oh, the speedy walking, you can see if it's run out. So if you take both of them at the same time, you'll know when your thermal potion has run out because you won't be running around as quickly. Here's how you can complete part two of Spooky Secrets, the basement library quest in multiplayer. So you need to invite somebody via multiplayer to your island. Go in that same door, door number two, by way of that tilted bookcase. There's one switch in the starting area. Make sure it's flipped to the position where the player on the right is able to walk over the first green path. Have the player on the right walk over the green path and wait on the purple square. After they do that, the player on the left needs to flip the switch, cross the green path, and stand on the purple button. This will allow the player on the right to cross the new green path over to the safe. There's also a book here that you could pick up. Once there, they need to go to the next lever. And if for some reason that lever is not up because you've tried this a few times, the pink button will reset it, but make sure that your partner on the left is on a safe area when you do that. Otherwise, they'll fall through. When they flip the switch, only the square, the purple square where the switch is, is going to be safe on the right. But now the player on the left will have several green paths available to them. So first, the player on the left needs to flip the switch. Once they do, the player on the right can proceed to the next purple square and just wait there. Then the player on the left needs to flip that switch again to open up their green path again, all the way on the left side down to that first purple button. Once there, they need to remain standing on that purple button and allow the player on the right to proceed over the short green path and stand on their purple button. Be sure to go down to where the chair is to pick up a book. Once you've retrieved the book, go to the purple button that's on the right path and stand on that one until the player on the right proceeds all the way to the switch. They need to switch that switch, which will remove the green path in front of them, but will open up a green path to the chest for the player on the left. Once the player on the left has reached the final area where the chest is, the player on the right can switch the switch again to bring back up their green path to the end and then they will be able to get their chest and leave the area. If the player on the left falls down and the player on the right just leaves, the player on the left may be stuck and may not be able to reach their final door. So make sure that both players stay in that final area until both of them are there and then leave together. This puzzle in multiplayer I think is a little bit more tricky than the previous one because it's slightly non-linear, but mostly because you can't see the entire puzzle or even the other player on the screen the entire time. Once complete, whoever is the host player will talk with Hiromi to finish off the quest. And remember, you need to finish this quest on your own island. So if you're doing it in multiplayer, make sure that you do it on your own island, even if you also do it on someone else's. Otherwise, the quest will not progress. So now you know how to do this quest both on your own and in multiplayer. Hopefully this helps you with Spooky Secrets Part 2, the basement library, library basement quest, and lets you know that you can do this one solo. But remember, you can also do it multiplayer, and you'll probably have an even easier time. Now, we have not found the Ice Witch hat yet. I've been exploring. I haven't seen it anywhere. If you do find it, let me know in the comments where it was. It looks again like we're going to have a time lock between this room and the next one. We should have two rooms left in the secret basement library. I'm assuming that we'll be doing the next one one week after completing room two, but we'll have to see. If we do, we'll be live streaming it next Friday or whenever it unlocks. Subscribe for more Hello Kitty Island adventure content and turn on notifications to find out the next time we go live. Hope to see you there.